Have you ever wondered if a home loan refinance is right for you or what is it to begin with? Well, so did Derek Jones and Derek Jones reached out to me and he had asked me to make a video about refinance. And thank you for that, Derek, because it got me thinking about home loan refinance and the reasons why people refinance and what people should know about a refinance. So in today's episode, I'm gonna cover nine points, give you a couple of pro tips about what you should know about home loan refinance to find out if it's right for you. My name is Andrew Finney, your real estate geek. If you need help finding a top agent where you live or if you simply wanna drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Tap the bell icon to get notified of the next episode. Thank you. Okay, team, so let's take a closer look at this. Consider this like a beginner's guide to refinancing your mortgage. So the first point that we want to go over is what you should know before refinancing. When we're talking about refinancing, it's a very simple process. Essentially, what you're looking at is you're replacing your old mortgage with a new mortgage. That process itself is what's called refinancing. Refinancing is done by different people for different reasons. We'll talk about some of those reasons a little bit later in this episode, and you can see if you relate to any of those reasons why people do that too and see what's going to be best for you. So if you're wondering what happens to that first mortgage, well, when you do a refinance, it's essentially paying off the first mortgage and allowing a second loan to be created. So now you have an all new mortgage and there's certain pros and cons that come along with that. And we'll talk about that too. Now, if you have perfect credit history, refinancing could be a good way to convert a variable loan rate to a fixed rate. It can also be a good way to lower your interest rate if the prevailing rates are turning down lower than the mortgage rate that you already have. It's important to know what your rate is and also important for you to understand how changing the rate can impact you and when that's a good strategy from the pursuit. It can be really good. But if you don't have perfect credit or you do have some debts that are kind of like too much debt, it can actually hurt you whenever you get refinancing. So it can be very risky. You want to know what you're doing whenever it comes into getting your refinance. The danger in refinancing your home really lies within ignorance. So a lot of things with home loan refinance are very, well, difficult at times, right? And difficult to understand, but it doesn't have to be. And that's why we made this video. And that's why I appreciate Derek Jones bringing it up. So without the right knowledge, it can hurt you if you refinance and increasing your interest rate rather than lowering it. It can also reset the clock on your mortgage balance. So if you had a 30 year fixed rate loan and you went ahead and did a refinance and you'd already made 10 years worth of payments on your home, it's not really gonna benefit you to go back to 30 years on that reset clock, is it? So it's one of those things that you really have to think through this and figure out what's gonna be best for you. That brings us to point two, what is refinancing? Refinancing is a process of obtaining a new mortgage in an effort to reduce your monthly payments, lower your interest rates, take out cash from your home for large purchases or change mortgage companies. A lot of people start thinking about refinance whenever they have equity in their home. Let's say that you bought your home for $300,000 and in today's market, it's worth like 500,000, right? So that means you have $200,000 of value of equity, if you will, in your home. Sometimes this gets to be really, really enticing. You ever heard the expression like money burning a hole in someone's pocket? Well, when people start figuring out their home has six digits in it and they're like, I kind of like that money because I got some ideas for it, or I would like that money out of my house. That's when people start beginning to get tempted by the refinance. So when you talk about refinance, you just really got to be real with yourself and know why you're doing it and your intentions behind it. Now, the third point is what are the advantages of refinancing? Well, one of the advantages of refinancing, regardless of the equity, is reducing the interest rate if possible. Now, when mortgage interest rates are going up, is that the time to refinance a home? No. When mortgage rates are going down, is that a time to refinance a home? Possibly. It depends on the situation and your credit history and what is all going to be involved when you refinance, any kind of new loan terms, any kind of new rates, any kind of anything, right? If you want to refinance, you can actually do so to lower the interest rate whenever that's available in the market, but you don't have to draw out equity of your home. So going back to our $300,000 home example, let's say that the market's at 500,000 for your home. And let's say that whenever you purchased your home, you had a five and a half percent rate. Let's say that the prevailing rate at the time that you're considering a home loan refinance is like 3.5% that's going to be a pretty big difference. Does that mean that you have to refinance it at the $500,000 amount? No. Let's say in the same time of period that you've paid $100,000 off of your mortgage balance, which means that you only owe $200,000. You can simply refinance that $200,000 into that lower interest rate. Now there will be costs that are incurred in the process of doing that. So we want to take a closer look at that too. And we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. So the fourth thing is what are the risks, right? There's always a risk. There's always a trade off of different things when we start talking about it. So this is where it comes into like a video that I made recently where I was talking about loan estimates. You want to know what's going on with your prepayment penalties. Are you going to be assessed a prepayment penalty if your mortgage is paid off early? If so, you need to calculate and be aware of that so that you understand how much money that's possibly going to be. You want to make sure that you always get into a loan type that does not have a prepayment penalty if at all possible. So that's a really, really big risk when you start talking about refinance if you have a prepayment penalty. Some of the other ones can also be the additional fees that be aware of before refinancing. So I'm going to 
take a look over here at my notes so I can break this down for you accurately, right? So you're talking about costs that include paying for an attorney if you need to do so to ensure that you're getting the most beneficial deal possible and handle the paperwork you might not feel comfortable with filling out. You're also gonna have additional bank fees. So you need to be prepared for these different fees and you need to be able to shop around for what mortgage option and mortgage service provider is gonna be best for you. Normally a good rule of thumb is go back to the same loan officer that you worked with before if you liked him or her and to ask them about it. If you have already established that relationship with them, go back and ask them, you know, is now a good time for me to refinance? Why and why not? And see what they say and let them and then simply ask them, do you believe it's in my best interest to do a refinance at this point? Why or why not, right? So you want to know what's going on and you want to get objective truth in reality so that you can make the best decision possible. So the fifth thing is what to do if you decide to refinance. If you're going to refinance and that's what you really want to do, then the first thing that you want to do is consider exactly how you're going to repay the mortgage. Going back to our example in this video, if you bought your home at $300,000 and it's worth $500,000 today, if you refinance your loan and you drew out the equity of your property up to that $500,000, you no longer have a $300,000 home. You have a $500,000 home that you're paying on and you'll lose it because you're going to be taking all that cash out of your house up front if that's what you chose to do was a cash out refi. That's what you hear about all the time. Cash out refi. Uh, get your cash out of your house. Go buy a truck. Go buy a boat. Go buy this. Go buy that. They tout people with dreams. They tout people with things that are materialistic, status symbols or whatever happens where they say, get your money now, right? While the getting's good. They know that most people are not going to sit back and think about the risk associated with it. They know they're going to be able to tug on emotional heartstrings when they do it. And people people take out that cash. What happens in some cases, and I hope if that's you and you've done that, I really hope it's, this doesn't happen to you where you lose your home here in about four or five years because you get foreclosed on because you didn't realize or you didn't accurately plan out how you're going to repay that mortgage balance of $500,000 when you were accustomed to that $300,000 mortgage balance amount, right? So when you start really thinking through that, your first game plan is to know exactly how you're going to repay and exactly what your intent is behind the refinance and why you're doing it. If you're simply doing it to drop a rate, and you're simply not going to draw out any equity of the property, easy peasy. When the market's available to lower the interest rate, smart move, right? So, I mean, it's one of those things that consider it's one of those things to get real with yourself about what are you gonna do? What is your intention behind refinancing? And why is it important to you to consider refinancing or not consider refinancing, okay? And there's all kinds of different options that go into that. Okay, so as a pro tip, I'm just gonna throw this out here. Don't blow the money. Again, if you got a house that's $300,000 and it's worth 500, that's $200,000 of equity. It's not gonna benefit you if you take out $200,000 of equity and you go buy yourself a Rolls Royce. <laughs> it's not going to benefit you. It's really not. What are you going to do with a Rolls Royce? Sometimes people go out and spend money on the most superficial thing. You know, you see people drawing out this money and they go buy a new Mercedes Benz. They go buy some kind of boat. You, they go buy a motor coach. They go do all this stuff because they want this stuff. And when they buy all this stuff, what they really put on the line was a roof over their head, the place that they come home to at night and the place that gives them shelter and peace of mind by knowing they have a home that they own that's taking care of them as they take care of it. Taking that cash out to buy things like that, trust me, at the end of the day, you're probably going to get tired of those things a lot faster and wish that you wouldn't have done that with your home as you get hit with that bigger mortgage payment. Something to think about, something to consider. That's why it's a pro tip. It's up to you what you decide to do and what's most important to you. So the sixth point is when can you refinance your home? If you choose to refinance, most lenders will tell you that you need to wait at least 12 months or longer. It's up to the lender. So if you have an idea of refinance, then you want to talk to them, but it seems like it's pretty standard. A lot of them are going to say, hey, you need to wait at least 12 months, at least nine months, what have you. Now, now, if you're looking at refinancing into a lower interest rate, even if the rates went down like a quarter of a point or a half a point, if you just closed on your house a year ago, it may not be beneficial because you're still going to have these little closing costs on the backside of this refinance loan. You might be wondering right now, well, Andrew, you know, I, somebody hit me up and I watched this commercial late at night or, you know, I heard on the radio, cash out refi doesn't cost me anything to refinance my house. What they're not telling you is in the fine print, they're going to tack all the fees onto the backside of your loan. No one's going to do something for free. You know that. I know that. So let's be real about this. So you can make a smart decision whether this is right for you or not. The seventh thing is the reasons why a lot of people do home loan refinance. The reasons why a lot of people do it is they look and say, oh, okay, I've been paying a monthly mortgage payment at this $300,000 home amount. Well, my home is now paid off $100,000, so I only owe $200,000. If I refinance my home, even if it was the same interest rate, my monthly mortgage bills would be 
less. So if they did that, that's one of the reasons why people do that. It makes a lot of sense, especially if you go down to living on one income. Let's say that you were married or you have spouse, significant other, one of you guys lose your job, one of you guys decide to be a stay at home parent, whatever, right? And you lose one of those incomes. In that case, in that strategy, that might be a smart move for you. But that is one of the reasons why people refinance homes. Another one is to avoid balloon payments, especially if the loan type that they got involved with was like an adjustable rate mortgage. Sometimes they look a lot better than they are and they generally last anywhere from five years to seven years and you own your property but what happens on that fifth year in a day and that or that seventh year in a day it balloons and that's part of what led into the 2008 crisis unless you know what you're doing with an adjustable rate mortgage they're not the best option for you there's a time and a place for them if you're looking for a long-term home it's not the time and a place for one of those just my opinion just my suggestion just my thought you know make your own decision by talking to a local loan officer and reviewing your options of what you think is best for you now the third one is that they were looking to banish the private mortgage insurance now you remember that thing called private mortgage insurance when you got your loan and you talk to your loan officer and you're like what the heck is a private mortgage insurance right and you're like oh i didn't know i had to pay that how long do i have to pay that well if you got a conventional loan then you're generally paying until you get to a point of called 20 percent loan to value ratio which means that your home has 20 percent of equity in it in relation to the value of the mortgage right when that happens you can approach your lender and ask them to drop it but if you have an fha loan it's called mortgage insurance premium and that thing sticks on there for the life of the loan so if you have an fha loan and going back to our three hundred thousand dollar home example your home is now worth five hundred thousand dollars you paid off a hundred thousand dollars of your principal balance on your home and you're like hey you know I kind of would like to get rid of this stuff and you can't underneath an FHA loan because it lasts the life of the loan that's a reason to refinance into a conventional loan at that point so they can go ahead and drop the mortgage insurance premium something to think about something to consider but that is one of the popular options why people will also consider refinance a fourth popular option is people want to cash out a portion of the home's equity or all of it unfortunately which goes back to that pro tip I was making a moment ago obviously Andrew is not a fan of taking out a cash out refi for the purpose of silly, superficial, needless things, right? Now, if some people consider doing a cash out refi, they might do so for medical reasons. They might do so for educational purposes. That's entirely different. Everything can happen in life and God forbid we ever have to rely on our home to pay our medical expenses. I really hope that never happens to you. I really, really do. But it is one of the reasons why people do this. The second common reason there is that people will pay for education. Education is really expensive. So that's one of the reasons they do that. Or simply, if somebody's getting ready to sell their home, they know they're going to sell their home in the next six to 12 months and they know know their home needs improvements, then they'll look at a home equity line of credit or they'll do a partial cash out refi for the amount that they need to renovate their home when they know they're going to get that money back whenever you like turn around and close. Now, those are three reasons why people do use them and it can be very, very smart depending on the circumstances of the situation. Now, only you can decide what's best for you, okay? The eighth point is the cost of refinancing your home. I'm just going to go over four different kinds of fees that are going to be associated with the cost of refinancing your property. You'll need to check with a local loan officer to see what those actual terms and rates are going to break down to in your area, but you're going to have an application fee. You're going to have title insurance and title search. You have lenders attorney review fees if applicable, and you have points and fees incurred on the loan origination. So you want to get all of that information available in a loan estimate from the loan officer and see how it's going to impact you at the end of the day and make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with. Okay. The ninth and final point in today's episode is what to do next. Well, what to do next, if you really are curious about your home loan refinance options that are unique to your situation is to reach out to a local loan officer today and go ahead and start reviewing your loan options with them for your home loan refinance and find out if it's going to be best for you and what it's going to look like for you. Only you can decide what's best for you and yours at the end of the day. But by having all the knowledge available to make a well-informed decision, you can have peace of mind and comfort with whatever you decide to do when you're first clear on knowing why do you want to do the refinance and how it's going to impact you. So I hope this video has helped you today. I hope it's empowered you. So what I'd like you to do is tell us what you're thinking about this episode in the comments section below. If you've recently done a home loan refinance, tell us why you did it and tell us how it worked out for you and if there was anything that was hidden to you or if it was all explained up front. Ideally, we're working with reputable people that explain everything up front. That way you know what's going on with your home loan refinance and you know all the stuff that you're about to get yourself into. Tell us about it in the comment section below. I'll go ahead and pop up my contact information. If you simply want to drop me a line to say hello or if you need help finding a top agent where you live, please let me know. Always love to hear from you and I'm always here to help you. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, please subscribe to this channel. Number two, please like this video. Number three, please share this video around with someone you know it's going to be a help because someone just like you is considering whether a home loan refinance is right with them and get them started today with today's beginner's guide into refinancing your mortgage. Please share it with them. Thank you. In between now and next time, I'm wishing you and yours a lifetime full of love, wealth, 
abundance and happiness. Thank you for watching today, team, and enjoy an amazing day.